Good morning, active traders. I'm live from Colorado Springs. It's Ken Calhoun, myself, your humble host, here with this week's episode of Trading Week Ahead. Let's kick the markets butt like we did last week and see where we're going to head moving forward. My all access pass is available until Friday, this Friday. Uh, now is the time to get off your button and order if you're not yet a member. And if you are an all access pass member, you can start contacting me with your choice of your thousand dollars worth of courses that you get. So many people have been joining lately. Uh, now's the time you can just send me a support ticket, not an email. Send me a support ticket and take a look at the courses at uh, tradingvideos.com if you're an all access member and let me know which ones you want. I'll start fulfilling all those. And if you're not yet an all access member, uh, you'll get it's only $9.97 for a year. And for that, you get my live trading room. You get just a quick, quick commercial note here before we jump into the charts. It's a trademastery.com forward slash. I got all these monitors all over the place. All access. You get over 425 hours of live webinars. Uh, you get $1,000 worth of courses. So it's like a full rebate of your investment worth of courses. So it's like a two for one bonus. You can see how my live room works. I've got a satisfaction credit guarantee. You know, you can. I get credit towards other courses and I got videos that explain things. The only thing is when you watch the day trading live room video, I used to run it just Monday, or Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday for many, many years, but now I run it Monday through Friday. So even though it says Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I expanded coverage of the room. So you get me five days a week. And so for less than the price of a two day seminar or less than the price of a Starbucks coffee a day, you can get me for all these services and I'm curious to see how I did in this year's Reader's Choice. I hope you guys voted for me. I was voted the number one author in the world last year by all this technical analysis of stocks and commodities readers. Thank you for that. And I hope that I get, uh, I hope that I got rated in the top five, at least again this year. I was number two last year before last. I was number one and number two last year uh, rated. I'm the top rated author in the world, which is cool, at least until the, the, the next round of Reader's Choice Awards comes out in a few weeks, so we'll see. And I got tax return proof, actually trade, lots of video testimonials. Join me at trademastery.com all access. There's never been a better time to join me because if the market sells off, I'm a stone cold expert in shorting the market with our inverse instruments. So we'll see for day and swing trades. And I walk everyone through step-by-step step what I'm really trading and, and teach you the patterns in addition to whatever's hot on the day, so. All information's for educational use only. And I'm a real trader. So anyway, let's get on with it, Calhoun. Where's the charts? Let's start off with our S&P. We trade markets first, stocks and market internals and sectors second. At a pullback off this previous high, we had an all-time record high Thursday, yet I went short $11,000 worth of inverse instruments yesterday uh, because I anticipate we may get a drop. I could be wrong. I, I was up $1,700 two weeks ago, and I gave back most of it last week uh, because I scaled out, but we had a big gap down against, I should say gap up against my inverse position. So uh, I'm still in the money, but gave back some profit. I went short correctly the market on that day, and I made some money. I went short into the close here, and it bounced up, and so I gave back some of my profit, and then gave back some more profit, and now back at scratch. And so I went short again, and I want to see if the cycle continues. Like that song from The Lion King, The Circle of Life or whatever. We got ups and downs. It's a wild ride. How many of you guys think the market may drop on the coronavirus fears? Show of hands. I don't know. I'm taking a small bet, just 11 grand worth of short instruments uh, uh, Friday. So we'll see if this sell-off continues. I mean, I don't know, it's anybody's call. This market has plenty of reasons to go up and plenty of reasons to go down. So it's a very headline driven market. Uh, earnings releases have fairly been positive lately, but Wall Street's top traders know that that's not gonna be the ongoing case because of supply chain issues with China and other economic slowdown factors uh, because of not only the global situation with uncertainty in the Middle East and China blowback, but Volatility has been increasing. So anyway, a lot of people saying yes on the drop. 
Hey, James, let's say when price breaks above my 50 MA, do I wait for a retest before entering trade? I wait for a re-breakout. I want it to get confirmed because that's where the high frequency trading algorithms kick in using those type of data points. So for example, S&P exit target on a major short drop would be the 3030, right? The 200 SMA is the critical line in the sand, but this is still a very bullish uptrend. So uh, the bear signal will be if we lose and hold, often the 50 SMA does false breakdowns. It'll touch and kind of kiss, do a false breakdown, and then spike back up again, which is why I was scaling out of my inverse positions on this day because it's starting to bounce. Now, what we want to look for is does the stock market lose the 50 SMA and start to go down here? And is it that almost certainly wouldn't occur Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, maybe towards the tail end of next week. I want to see if we're able to get down there or do we rally on up to new highs? For a clue as to which is most likely, we always want to keep an eye on our VIX. And if you look at our VIX, what's the directional trend of the VIX? It's up, right? We're taking out higher highs, higher highs, lower lows, higher highs, I should say higher highs. This isn't a higher low, so maybe it's not technically an uptrend yet, but we did a breakout at least uh, this past week or so. And so we've got a new high VIX. It ran all the way up to 20 on coronavirus fears, dropping all the way back down to the 15. Now, previous support can be new resistance. So uh, or previous resistance is new support. So this is previous resistance near the 200 SMA at the 15 on the VIX. It pulled back and is starting to pivot here. Be very in tune with the VIX. Uh, use that as a directional indicator for your trades. When the VIX goes up, the stock market goes down as a rule of thumb. And when the VIX goes down, the market's going up. So the market was rallying when the VIX was suppressed down here under the 15. The stock market was going up. When the VIX pops up, the stock market sold off. So keep an eye on this to see, especially if our VIX breaks over 1650. That's my official R1 call on the VIX. If we gap and run over 16 and a half Monday or Tuesday, watch out below. The market's likely to crash and burn. Remember I said that. Remember this next week when we see what the market does. Now, on the other hand, if the VIX stays under 16 and a half, particularly if it loses, say, 1450, if it gets under a new multi day low at 1450 right here, uh, then we may well see a market rally. So keep an eye on those two key support and resistance levels in the VIX. I'm an expert with the VIX in our markets. I'm an expert trader, and I want you guys to make bigger winning trades more often. And the way to do that, hopefully, is to join my services at crushwallstreet.com, my all-access pass. Remember that. It's a great domain. I registered a while ago, crushwallstreet.com, channeling Gary V there. Crush it, baby. Anyway, we see some weakness in our socks, and one of the picks for my Swing Scans members is the the inverse of the SOX is the uh, SOXS. We'll see if it bounces. Notice, please, our semiconductors we have. What are three signals that make the case for shorting semis? Not even including the fact that growth, momentum growth sectors like semiconductors are especially susceptible to China supply chain issues, whether you're looking at AMD or Micron or Intel, uh, they still continue to have good numbers lately, but that's likely to be impacted negatively with next quarter's earnings. And remember, professional traders, we all know that, and so it makes the case for a short setup in the, in the semiconductors if we fail to take out the 1980 resistance. But what are, there's three technical signals that tell us that semiconductors may be in for selling pressure. Type them out right now if you would. If I could play the Jeopardy theme song, I would. Bom, 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 bom. I can't sing worth shit. I can play tenor sax like a champ, but I can't sing at all. Unlike my teacher, who's she's a great singer, but. It's interesting, I was asking, she's a world famous, uh, Grace, she's a world famous horn player, and I asked her, well, why don't you play tenor? And she said, well, her voice matches alto better, which is smart, I hadn't thought about that. She sings and plays the alto, so she has a voice that's in the same, no range is the alto, which is interesting. Anyway, what are the three signals? Hey, Jack Dish, Bob, Mira, Jim, Gerald, Brian, what do we got? Right, Gerald, lower, lower highs, ATR, big red candles, declining trend, red candles, slope down, inverted hammers, bearish engulfing, 
big red, small bowl candles. Thanks everyone for posting. In the interest of time, let me tell you, we got a bearish engulfing, that's signal number one. Signal number two is a large big candle loss of the 50 SMA. Whenever you lose either the 50, the 100, or the 200 simple moving average, or regain it if it's something that's been downtrending and bouncing, like our inverses are trying, that's a signal that triggers high frequency trading algorithms. Um, and that's what, and, and, and the brains of smart market technicians who know how to trade. Uh, we like to, since we don't have the benefit of Wall Street computers, uh, we have the benefit of our brains, which I like better um, because you can take in more factors. Anyway, that's the first sign of trouble, loss of support there. Second sign of trouble is like a trader saying big red candles. We see a couple of big red candles. Uh, we have a downtrend, right? Lower lows, well, at least a downtrend from here to here. So unless we regain 1920, that would be R1 and 1980 would be R2. And S1 would be the 1840, it's a 50 simple moving average. But the fact that we put in that point, just like yesterday's drop in the S&P, right? Anytime you have a, this is the still the SOX indice. But since our S&P took out a two day low, it's a critical line in the sand, right? For the rest of your life as a trader, be sure to evaluate swing trading potential based on whether we're at a two day low, an inside day, which is the worst place to trade, or an out day on the upside. Look at it like an inverse traffic signal. Like this is a red light, this is a yellow light, and this is a green light. And I invented that, it's a brilliant idea. Of course, all the guys on Instagram are gonna copy, oh yeah, let's, let's copy that. They know who they are, that's okay. I don't mind if you guys copy, because you're lame, but anyway, that's okay. I'm the expert, I'm the genuine expert. Uh, make decisions on whether or not to hold your swing trades based exclusively on the closing value. Professionals trade the close, amateurs uh, play the open. Unless you're day, for swing trading, amateurs uh, trade the open. For day trading, professionals trade the open. For swing trading, professionals trade the close. Like I did yesterday going short the market because uh, this is down at a two day low. That's the price that tells you the directional bias is down. So when you're looking for that, uh, make decisions as to whether to buy, sell, or hold on whatever stock chart you're trading. So let's, let's do an example. What does this Twitter chart tell you? Buy, sell, or hold, based on what I just said. You got just a second here. The answer would be hold, because we're on the inside of the two-day chart. What does a Tesla chart tell you to do? Hold, because there's a choppy as fudge. Shut the front door, did nothing choppy Friday, right? It's a mean reverting, it ran, it ran up, bullish cut breakout, bearish cut breakdown sideways so you would hold right if it were up here you would add more if it were down here into the close you would sell some oil may be a bit oversold <clears throat> this gold inverse closed up here so this would tell you to add some a little bit because it, by the way that's another nuance that i teach in my live room uh, and also on swing scans, the amount to add to a winning swing trade is a function of the two-day chart pattern. Something that's just a little baby breakout above the previous day's high, that's not enthusiastically way up, uh, strong long would be, uh, you would just add a little bit, if anything. You wouldn't add a whole lot because it's a very small uptick there. If you look at, say, other charts, like Uber, uh, you would add more aggressively. Actually, if we closed up here, it looks like we didn't close it quite above the, this is kind of an aftermarket high, so I wouldn't add aggressively unless Uber breaks north of say 41.40. But use that, that two day high breakout pattern, like here's Uber's chart lately, going all the way from 30 to 40. That's a good decade round trip. We go long above the whole number 30, above the 50 or the 100, 100 is a better entry signal for a pivot. Uh, that would be a good breakout. We had a, I'll call it a silver cross or something, the 50 crossing upwards over the 100. And for that reason, we see continued buying pressure to the upside. All right, so those are the kind of thoughts, you know, the thoughts, the thinking cap you want to put on as a 
as a veteran trader is where the where's the next place? But pay attention to the VIX, pay attention to which charts have directional volatility. And let's go get them. Let me know if any questions. Let's see a question from James. I like your name. It's the name of one of my favorite TV series characters. Right. So I understand then you wait for a break below the 50 and then buy when it breaks above again. Well, no, it's not that simple. It depends on the chart. You know, for example, you can start off, often the 50 SMA on a breakout to the upside uh, causes false breakouts or kind of choppy. The 100, the, the further out the periodicity, using the statistician's phrase, because I used to be one, uh, the stronger the signal, just like the larger the candle, the stronger the signal. So often the problem with simple 50 MA breakouts is they often fake out or they'll kind of chop around. The 100 is a better pivot signal. And you can see if you bought above the 100 simple moving average in Uber, uh, you're good for eight points, right? The 50 might have gotten like in and he said, ah, what the heck, I'll stop out because it's not going up. And then it runs without you if you didn't take the 100 SMA breakout. So use the 100 simple moving average as a breakout signal strongly. For example, so if we look at something like our TVIX, a weak breakout signal here that caused a false breakout was right near the 50, right? False bounce over the 50 and it promptly ran back. But if and when if and when it ever gets back over 75 or so, <clears throat> that's only likely to be a very strong signal with an exit target up in the low hundreds up here. So that'd be a signal for a bounce. Not there yet though, right? Similarly, if you look at say Tesla, it's been above all three moving average lines. <clears throat> and that's the strongest pattern to look at is when you have uncrossed, for the most part, uncrossed moving average lines and the equity price or the ETF price stays above all 350, 100, and 200 simple moving average lines. It's like the highway of gold, I call it, kind of like the yellow brick road. I'm a big fan of The Wizard of Oz. I like that movie. Like there's a certain political character that reminds me of the Wicked Witch of the, the West. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog Toto too, but I won't mention her name, <clears throat> Nancy. But the point is, sorry, I can't help it. Boom, baby. Three uncrossed moving average lines. I called the short at 954 live in front of all of you guys who are here for my closing bell session that was free last week. When it was 960, I said short 954. That was the best short call I made in my life because it dropped like 50 points immediately. So if you were here, you saw it, right? It was a great short call. Anyway, right now we're doing a mean reversion pattern. You kind of mark out previous. Major resistance is 600. It ran all the way up to the 950, went around 965, I think, something like that, and then dropped down in the middle. So for Tesla, we would not want to be long right now, or at least not in any size. We would scale out if it starts to lose that 700 nearest 100 point level and scale back in only if it breaks over 800. Remember, I said that, friends, because I'll try and remind me next week if you would. And I apologize for not being able to answer all the questions as they're scrolling by here. I got a big ass turnout today. Um, wow, big turnout. Thanks to the hundreds of folks for being here. Uh, 800 resistance, 700 support. Keep it simple. If it breaks and holds over 800, maybe good, you know, up to 900 to infinity and beyond. Uh, what's more likely because we're in a directional downtrend in a troubled market, a rally market, but we have coronavirus trouble on the horizon. If we lose 700 for a short, that would likely be the best play for Tesla next week. For those of you who trade it. I traded it once, I made 20 points on all one share. So hey, bought myself a nice lunch. But that's the power of understanding your patterns with a great degree of intelligence, specificity, accuracy, and authenticity, and genuine expertise, is you get to be right more often than not. And the goal is to try and make bigger winning trades more often and more consistently. The way to get a consistency, and I'll tell you before we wrap up, uh, the way to get it, and let, actually let me put these glasses back on so I can read the questions. Hey Bill, sorry, I don't have time to pull up individual charts. Let's see, does the two day rule work in most stocks under 10? Uh, not so much for under $10 stocks. Stocks under $10 are for morons. Don't trade stocks under $10 if you wanna make money as a trader. Stocks under $10 are for idiots, morons, and degenerate gamblers. 
ask any Wall Street trader. They'll say under 10, well, that's if you're a college kid, don't have anything better to do than gamble away your money. But intelligent traders always focus on charts, may not this expensive, but like my pick last week for you guys. And the reason is the consistency. I mean, I begrudgingly cover the small caps and and my my win rate on those in the live room is also extremely good, but it's better on the stocks like this in the twenty, thirty, forty dollars share range because that's the the that's where professionals play. Amateurs play with penny stocks and under ten dollars stocks. Those are generally stocks where trading accounts go to die. I would much much rather, if my life depended on me helping you guys double your trading accounts, stop trading under ten dollars stocks. Trade consistent charts that don't do pop and drop one hit wonders. That doesn't work. Trust me on that. You're kind of lucky if it works, but in general, it doesn't work. And you don't want those kind of charts. What you want is charts that are consistent. Professional traders with money that cause things to keep going up, we all abhor under $10 stocks because that's for idiots, okay? That's the truth of the matter. There's been an infestation of misleading, dishonest, mostly young guys trying to say, a lifestyle of the rich and famous. I turn a few hundred dollars into a million dollars trading cheap stocks. Show me the tax return proof and you won't see it because it's not there because they're bullshitting you. So don't trade cheap stocks. Good point, Brian, about options. Hey, Sue, it's uh, Australian 2 a.m. Well, good morning. I especially need the coffee. Thanks for being here. Remember to pay close, careful attention to the VIX. <laughs> right, Mukesh, I agree about the, the impeachment thing. Hey, thanks, Jim. Thanks, another great Saturday show. I'm trying. Hey, Ahmed, what are the two strong sectors recently? Two strong sectors recently. I think biotechs, healthcare biotechs that are in the coronavirus solution uh, and retail have been okay, but generally healthcare has been the stalwart. If you look at things like healthcare and utilities and cyclicals, those are typically defensive plays. And not to put on my talking head on financial news TV head series, but your uh, healthcare sector is good and utilities and consumer cyclicals. Uh, but in general, now is the time to be cautious because with all the pending issues out there, I'm going to be careful. Hey, thanks, Bill, for the e clicks. Hey, Chris is saying your remarks on under $10 stocks is hysterical and spot on in caps. Thanks for your honesty. Thanks. I'm nothing if not honest. I make mistakes every day. Like I was up $1,700 two weeks ago, uh, but I gave back most of it last week because the market did a surprise rally, even with all the coronavirus and impeachment crap and all that. So what the market gives, the market takes away. I'm hoping that the market will crash a little bit on Monday or Tuesday and put my trades even more in the money. So that would be a good thing. Another super Saturday. Hey, thanks, Bill. Appreciate it, man. And uh, yeah, Chris, uh, the trading, the close. I will go ahead and commit to doing those all week next week for you guys. Go to trademastery.com forward slash, that's www.trademastery.com forward slash T-T-O free. Trading the open free, T-T the letter O free. So trademastery.com forward slash T-T-O free if you want to join me around 3.30 in the afternoon to 4, and bring your questions all week next week, kind of open house close. I'm not going to give away the open sessions, the most valuable part, that's for my paid members, but if you want the daily recaps and see what happened and what the hot charts are, join me next week. Anyway, i got to run. I've got swing scans coming up momentarily, but thank you all very much for being here. I appreciate it. Sorry if I was talking a little fast. I've had some coffee, and I'm in a good mood, so I have so many great charts to work with. And true, Jim, yeah, there's a lot of short interest out there. Hey, Byron, it's your thing, man. Hey, Al, hey, you're welcome. I appreciate that, Chris. Thanks again, good stuff as usual. I'm trying, Al. But I guess to recap, the main focus is make sure you're trading the strongest charts with the most consistent price action with really tight stops and expect that at least for the rest of your life as a trader, expect that at least half your trades are going to be stops. How do you still make money? And the answer is all position sizing, scaling, and careful trade management. Now, don't get lost in the details. Don't obsess over, because uh, I used to do this, and it didn't make me any more money than keeping it simple. What made me the most money as a trader, my most profitable years, and I have had profitable years, uh, is playing the field. And like Sosnov so wisely says, trade small, trade often. 
Uh, that is the key to success. It's the law of large numbers, playing directional volatility the right way, whether you're an options trader or a stock or ETF or other trader. Consistent results come from consistent trade management practices, number one. And number two, consistent uptrending chart patterns. The consistency of your trade management process and approach is much more important than anything you'll do in your life as a trader. Small stops, you can take big stops, big wins, small stops, small wins. You've got to get rid of the big stops category, right? You've got to grind out your trades as a sequence and as a series of trades. Trading is not an all or nothing, go to Vegas and pull the slot machine handle approach. It's much more spray the field with a set of orders, manage risk, feed the winners, starve the losers, add to your winning positions, scale out of your losing positions. Using that two-day high-low strategy for swing trades and for intraday trading, we use things like whole number support and resistance and previous days high lows, and particularly I'm an expert in gap continuations, small gaps that keep going up, or in our current market, mean reversion pivots or mean reversion shorts. So that'll wrap us up, gang. I'm going to be out of here. See you guys next week. Bye for now.